First Presbyterian Church of Jackson upon its clo closing. Um, having held their final worship service, we wish to thank them for their witness to Jesus Christ in their community for so many years. We know that the Lord Jesus himself experienced God's grace in living, in dying, and indeed in rising from the dead. May the power of our Lord and Savior be with the members of this community as they seek to daily increase in the work of Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Friends, let us pray. Almighty God, you have declared that each thing on this earth has a season. You alone are eternal. As we come to the end of the fellowship of the First Presbyterian Church of Jackson, we come knowing the grace and love that have been shown among that congregation. Members have been born, baptized, confirmed, married, and buried. Faith has been taught, grown, lost, found, and endured. Love has been strengthened, cherished, discarded, forgotten, and built up. Bread has been broken and wine, wine outpoured. The waters of baptism have been sprinkled. The word of God has been proclaimed. In its own way, this church has been a community of Christ, one member of the wider body. And we now commit this fellowship and the members thereof into the gracious care of Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus and by the authority of the power of the Presbytery of Minnesota Valleys, I declare the congregation of Jackson to be dissolved. And may the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was brought back from the dead, be with all the members, friends, and affiliates of the First Presbyterian Church of, Church of Jackson in each new venture as they continue to deepen their relationship with Christ, their love of others, and their service to God. We pray these and all things through our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will also do a commissioning. We have a, a commissioning to go through. David? Um, yes. David? Mary Jo is here to share a brief. Oh, history. great. Okay. Okay. Uh, before we move on, then, um, Mary Jo, I looked earlier and I missed it. Mary Jo, I'm sorry that I didn't realize you were here. That's so wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Um, Mary Jo wanted to share with us uh, some witness of the First Presbyterian Church of Jackson, share with, with us some words about that congregation. So please, Mary Jo. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to. Um... First, I'm just going to read the history that was included in our bulletin in the last service. And please forgive me if I get emotional. Mm. The church was organized on August 30th, 1868, with 10 members. The Reverend Sheldon Jackson and the Reverend D.C. Lyon installed Reverend Ed Savage as pastor. Services were held in a log and frame schoolhouse located in the south end of 3rd Street, near the edge of the bayou where Parkview Motel once stood. In October 1868, Reverend Savage was ordained at the Presbytery and then attended the Synod. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. There he received a donation of $60 from Westminster Presbyterian Church for the erection of a church in Jackson. The plan for the church building was 24 by 40 with the seating capacity of 200. The pine lumber was purchased in Minneapolis and brought to Jackson from Mankato by oxen. In the summer of 1869, work was commenced in hauling lo local logs for framework in the study. This church was finished in 1869 and was used until 1902 when the construction of a new church diagonal from the old church was completed on the corner of Grant and Fifth Street. The first church service was held in Jackson on Sunday, June 11th, 1869 in an unfinished store building with Reverend Ed Savage as, as his pastor. Um, our church has donated the um, communion set that was given to uh, First Presbyterian in Jackson. We've donated it to the Jackson County Historical Society so that we will um, have some history of our church. Uh, the new church building was erected in 1901 and was built of brick at the cost of $16,000. The first use of the building was on Sunday morning, January 12, 1902. The first service was held in the basement because the sa sanctuary was unfinished. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper was observed and six persons were received into membership. Up until this time, the communion set consisted of a silver pitcher and two silver goblets. 
on display in the church in Arthex, which have been presented to the church by Dr. and Mrs. Or, yeah, Dr. and Mrs. Sheldon Jackson at the time when the church was first organized. But now individual cups were used for the first time by the new Reverend T. N. Weaver from Austin, who began his service as pastor in October of 1900. It was during his pastoral service that the new church building was erected. The manse, the original manse was built in 1892 and served the church for 62 years. The new brick manse was built in 1954 on the site of the previous manse at the cost of $22,000. Um, just a little history. Uh, when we observed our 100 and 100 year anniversary in 18 or 1968, we had 500 members. Um, we at this time we were down to 440. Um, there's many, many, many reasons for that. Um, I think all of you know what what they are probably, but it's a, just an aging con congregation with um, with no youth. And so we held our last service on April 25th, and it was. A beautiful service, and in our hearts we'll all be Presbyterians. I'm done. Thank you, Mary Jo, so much for your honest emotions, for the difficulty that there is in uh, making these changeovers, and for all things having their season, thank you for the witness that has been shared in Jackson. And on behalf of the Presbytery, we, we just want to thank you so much for the way that you have witnessed to Jesus Christ in that place uh, and shared the word and brought so many people to faith uh, in that location. I mean, Dan Dugan. Great. Okay. Uh, now I saw him earlier. I know. Dan I saw him here. too. I'm here. Thank you, Dan. Um, Dan is our uh, newest member of our presbytery. Dan, we have, uh, we've received Dan's statement of faith that should have been included in your packet. Hopefully you had a chance to look at that. But Dan, this is a time just for you to tell us about yourself. Tell us about your service. Um, you know, we're all pastors here. So everybody here is long-winded, me most of all, but you're welcome to, to take a little time, but not too much, but please introduce yourself to us. I'll be as brief as I can be. Um... I think that's it. <laughs> I, I was trying to figure out a place to start. Um, went to Dubuque Theological Seminary, um, graduated in 19, I think, 74. I'd gone to Tarkio College, um, which is no longer there, a Presbyterian college, but uh, served while I was in seminary. I served a small congregational church in uh, Riceville, Iowa. After that, I served a um, uh, church, a Methodist church, to in order to work on a staff and have that experience in uh, Creston, Iowa. And then spent five months in a parish in uh, Glasgow's an Eastern House, Easter House, uh, Scotland, just outside of Glasgow. And my wife came over, We, uh, my fiance came over at the time, and she's from the Isle of Mall, uh, ancestry wise. And um, so we actually got married on the Isle of Mall, came back, um, and I had uh, lined up uh, my first residency uh, for uh, CPE in Presbyterian Medical Center in Denver did an, an, another residency and some supervisory training in um, Topeka State, dropped out of supervisory training at that point because I was 28 years old and had no business trying to be a supervisor. Um, uh, I needed to grow up some. Um, and then it's been about 10 years in chaplaincy um, as a chaplain in different, um, two different hospitals and went to the Mayo Clinic uh, for supervisory training. From there, went to um, Wichita for about 18 months working as a supervisor there, ACPE supervisor, and then went to La Crosse, Wisconsin for about 15 years. And uh, after that, I went to um, a, a, a continuing care retirement center and Episcop 
Episcopal related um, facility in um, Alexandria and Falls Church, Virginia. Um, and retired from there and uh, came to uh, um, St. Cloud where I um, <clears throat> um, was retired for about 14 months and then started working here at the VA uh, uh, and I've been here since August um, doing uh, supervising students and, and visiting um, veterans. Um, I wrote a book on men in Greece, so it's been kind of an interesting setting for me to uh, um, uh, kind of play some of that, what uh, my, my writing out. And, um, the book was called Men, Grief, and Solitude, A Different Perspective. Um, I should have mentioned that I grew up in, in Missouri. Um, in and around Kansas City and Southern Missouri. Uh, so I have uh, three children, grown children, two grandchildren. We live next door to our daughter uh, in St. Cloud and our daughter and son-in-law and two grandchildren, which has been totally delightful. I, I've loved uh, living next door to my grandchildren and my family there. Um, so anyway, I have, I have a, an older son, daughter, and a younger son. So, and that's me. I'm here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Pam, you're just going to have to let me know if at any point we see Kathy bump back into the meeting uh, so we can continue with that, with that uh, part of the meeting. Did you, what was that? I said perfect. Yeah, and we'll just do that commissioning whenever we get to it because I don't know what else to do with that at the moment. <laughs> um, I David, don't think David. Can I uh, can I add one more thing? Please, please, please. Um, I, I, it's just an advertisement. Actually, we're uh, we're starting. Um, uh, a, a, we'll have an extended unit of CPE starting about. Um, May the, excuse me, um, October the 12th and run until about April the 22nd. Um, we'll have four hours um, a week of uh, group time, four hours of service here, ministry here at, at, um, at, at St. Cloud VA, and then um, eight hours in one's parish setting. So um, eight hours that will be supervised ministry, if you will, uh, there. So it'll be 12 hours of ministry, four of which will be here, and then four hours of uh, uh, group time. Uh, anyway, if anybody is interested in, in doing a unit of CPE, you can contact me here at, at, at the VA in St. Cloud. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, I, I'm glad you took a little extra time, Dan. We're running 18 minutes ahead of schedule. I know that that's really disappointing to everyone and you definitely want me to waste the next 18 minutes of your time. Um, but since we don't have Kathy here, we're just gonna keep going. If anybody else ever sees Kathy, shoot me something in the chat or something so that we can um, commission her officially. I'm assuming she got called away for something. So I think um, if we don't consider it too out of order to begin before the stated time of 11 o'clock, is that okay with everyone? I'm going to, unless you, if you have an objection, unmute your microphone and scream to the high heavens. But otherwise, by common consent, I'm going to assume we're ready to go. And I'm going to introduce us for the day. Um, so we are beginning our official uh, official meeting at this point um, with business to come. Hopefully all of our business has come before us uh, and, and is in your packet and you're ready for everything that's going to come. I think, oh shoot, I was supposed to let Karen play in a clip of music. We're going to do that later. Um, <laughs> sorry, Karen, because this things change, you know, we're flying by the seat of our pants all. Uh, so we will begin with a little bit of prayer. I'm just going to remind you all again before we do that. 
please keep your microphone muted. I think everybody has renamed themselves at this point, so we don't have 100 people named First Presbyterian Church, so that's good. Um, but do that if you haven't, and uh, we will get our meeting rolling. So let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather this day, albeit by electronic means. Would that this time be fulfilling, not just in our duties to administrate the needs of your wider church, but that we might be filled full of the Holy Spirit, acting, speaking, and listening in the ways that our discipleship to Jesus demands, acting in accordance with your will, and meeting the challenges of our day. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to turn things over to Pam to present the agenda and establish the role and declare a quorum and all that fun stuff. Great. Uh, welcome. And the agenda has been posted on the website and there are no additions. Great. Um, I am going to just move forward with this unless anyone has objections. Are there objections? By common consent, we move forward from with the agenda. So uh, Pam, the roll. So we do have a quorum. We have to seat several people as corresponding members. Uh, Ken Green from the Board of Pensions will be with us later this afternoon. Kyle Nolan from the Presbyterian Foundation is with us today. They both need to be seated as corresponding members. We also need to grant voice to Cassie Gabe, who's one of the directors from Lakeshore Center, the Presbyter Presbyterian Camp on Lake Okoboji. Doug Snazza, who's one of the directors from Clearwater Forest, the Presbyterian Camp up by Deerwood, Minnesota. And then Jill Boink, who is a Christian educator from the Wilmer Church, and Mark Geese, who is a Christian educator from the St. Cloud Church, who will be given a report later. So those are the folks we need to seat as corresponding members and grant voice. Are there others? That's what I was just going to ask. Hearing no other uh, names of those who need to be granted voice or seated, uh, and here having heard the names of those who must be given voice and seated, uh, does about, anyone have any? Uh, David, what about uh, Glennis Elliott from the Maynard Church? She's online. Yeah, but she's okay. a commissioner. But she's a commissioner, then. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Commissioners yeah. don't need to be granted voice. They have voice no. by virtue of their office. So yep. we don't need to grant voice or, or seat those folks. Um, we don't have a time to introduce first time commissioners on the agenda, I don't think, today. So apologies. Yeah. No, we do actually. Did I just overlook it? I'm sorry. I don't yeah. have it in my notes. But okay. Well, Regardless, uh, are there if there are no other names to be added, um, all those who must, must be seated have been named. Are there any objections to the seating or granting voice as stated by Pam? Hearing no such objections, we will move forward for, there it is, recognition of first time commissioners and guests. <laughs> I just didn't put it in my notes. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Are there first time commissioners that need to be uh, recognized for us today? Anyone not been to a Presbyterian meeting before that really wants to throw a hand up there and let us know who you are? David, I have somebody I'm uh, Easy Elaine. from Amboy. Uh, and this is first time commissioner Debbie Larson from Amboy. Yes, I see uh, Steve Anderson. Go ahead and unmute yourself. So I'm a first time commissioner from Cross Lake. Thank you, Steve. And I'd like to introduce first time commissioner Glennis Elliott. I don't know if she got her video. No, work. I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At least she's listening. I am. Thank Avidly. you. Glennis. Thank you, Glennis. Um, Thank do, you. We do we have anyone else? First time commissioners? Thank you all. We will try to make this meeting as painless as possible. Uh, hopefully we have a lot of uh, good things coming for you, including our next item, agenda item, which is the consent agenda. Um, Pam, you're going to holler at me if I'm out of order, right? Yeah, I, think okay. I, I will. Uh, the, Karen, does Karen want to throw that up on the screen? Or do we just trust that everyone's looked at it in their packet? Karen is working on it, I think. But the consent agenda, 
The consent agenda includes the minutes from the February meeting, stated clerk's report, the GAP, executive presbyter's report, administrative commission reports from Bruton, Crosslake, and Jackson, presbytery life report, a presbytery leadership report, and there was a supplemental commission on leadership report, uh, congregational transformation and development report, the report from the presbytery operations and a report from the committee on congregational nurture. Are the, is there anything anyone would like removed from the consent agenda? Going once, going twice. Sold by common consent, the consent agenda passes. Um, and that moves us on to the stated clerk's report, Reverend Pam Prouty. Okay, so I greet, I'm bringing you greetings today from Salt Lake City. I'm out here with my daughter trying to find her a place to live when she moves here in two months, so she's not homeless. Uh, my report was included in the packet. I want to go over our ordination anniversaries since our last meeting. Ray Larson was ordained on February 10th. And, and if you're here, because the next person is here, you got to wave your hand so we can see you. Elaine Boyd was ordained on February 16th. John Lindholm was ordained on March 6th. Chris Conlon was ordained on March 13th. Tom Voigt was ordained on March 13th as well. Kathleen Blair was ordained on March 23rd. Tom Gard was ordained on March 27th. Doug Dent is here. He was April Fool's Day, that's appropriate. Herb Rotunda, I saw him. He was ordained on the 21st of April. Aaron Alfred was ordained on the 25th of April. Randy Knuth is here. He was ordained on May 15th. Bob Springer on the 21st of May. And then Rollin Haynes on the 27th of May. So congratulations to all of our folks who were ordained since our last meeting. The one thing I wanted to point out is that a date has been set for a clerk review, which is October 23rd. And that will be at the Wilmer Church and we'll be reviewing minutes that day from 2019 and 2020. Also on that day, there'll be a training led by B. Orada for treasurers and other financial people in your church and the personnel committee through Kathy Terpstra We'll be doing some sort of training for personnel committees and commission on leadership is talking about doing some training that day as well so it'll be a full day of training on october 23rd at the wilmer church the other thing i wanted to let you know is i got a phone call the other day from paul sadekus many of you know paul he was a interim pastor in our presbytery for a few years he is in sibley for the summer and is willing to do pulpit supply down in the southern part of our presbytery. So if you would like this contact info, I can get that for you. That concludes my report. You're, you're muted, Dave. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, there are, uh, Pam did submit a written report as well. You are welcome to peruse that at your leisure as well. Uh, at this time, I will turn it over to Kathy if she's here to give the GAP Executive Presbyter report. Kathy, are you here or still not here? No. No. Oh, Kathy, we've got plenty for you to do when you get here later. Um, <laughs> I, I also submitted a written report. I'm not going to say anything about that now because I'm not on the agenda, but you're welcome to read over my report. Uh, I have, in fact, asked for feedback and, and opinions and all sorts of things. So please feel free to uh, throw those my direction whenever you'd like to get in touch. I'm always available. Love to hear from folks in the Presbytery. So at this time, we're going to move over to our committee and commission reports. Uh, Mark Ford, you're up first for presenting on behalf of representation. Uh, yeah, so uh, the report from the Committee on Representation is found in your packet. Uh, I am going to see if I can figure out how to uh, screen share here so everybody has access to it. Uh, let me scroll down here a little bit. Uh, so anyway, the, these are the people who have agreed to fill out terms and we need to uh, elect them to the following positions. Uh, you can see everyone there. The only change to this one is that Deb Greenwald of Wilmer uh, has had to uh, withdraw 
uh, because of uh, business work commitments too as well. Uh, you, uh, Steve Anderson from Cross Lake introduced himself as a first time commissioner. Uh, he is nominated to serve on congregational transformation. Uh, Rollin Haynes has been in our presbytery a while. He is going to be serving on congregational transformation too as well. Uh, so uh, because this is from the commission, uh, we move this and present it to the presbytery. Excellent, Mark. Thank you very much. You see the slate before you. Our, our uh, Presbyterian polity and bylaws require us to ask, are there any nominations for these positions to be filled from the floor? Hearing no such nominations from the floor, uh, we will take this, this recommendation from the committee. It requires no second as it comes from a committee. Uh, and we seek to cast a unanimous ballot in favor of the stated nominees. Are there any objections to the slate of nominees as presented by the Commission on, or Committee on Representation? Hearing no objections, the slate will be cast unanimously in favor of the named nominees. Thank you very much, Mark. Do you have anything else you need to share with us this morning before we move on? Yeah, I just wanted to add that we, as you can see from the report, is uh, that we're still uh, missing two people on commission on leadership, uh, and now obviously another person for uh, operations for uh, to do on the personnel side. And if you have, I know that there's lots of churches out there that are in the midst of transitions, and and people feel a little overwhelmed with doing their local stuff and participating in presbytery, but as a pastor or as a moderator, uh, if you have names that you can give to the committee, we would greatly appreciate it because we don't unfortunately know every person within the presbytery. Uh, so any recommendations that we can get from any of you would be greatly appreciated. That concludes our report. Thank you, Mark. So as Mark said, if you have that newly retired person in your congregation who has all sorts of time and doesn't know how to fill it, you hand that name to Mark Ford as soon as you can, and he'll be happy to make a phone call. Um, so uh, that is going to carry us through the representation committee's report, and that moves us on to operations. Uh, Leroy and Stan, I don't know which of you is going to speak first, but whoever is, the mic is now yours. Go ahead, Stan. Okay, um, the uh, financial packet was included in your, uh, or information was included in your packet, and if there are any questions about that, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Um, we continue to be in, in good financial situation, any good financial situation. Uh, at our April meeting, I think we had noted that uh, 44 of our churches had paid all or part of their per capita, and we appreciate that. I want to thank uh, each church who has, has sent in their per capita. It makes it a whole lot easier uh, for us to, to operate when we when we have the funds. Um, if there are no questions about the about the budget and the finance, we'll move on to the to the action that uh, we need to present to the Presbytery. And again, this was was in your packet. We have, um, over the past four, five, six years, uh, addressed this topic a number of times, and that is whether or not we needed to keep the office. Uh, if there were, if there were other options that uh, would would work for us, and uh, we have progressed further this time than uh, any any other time. Uh, I think uh, th that we have we have started on this. Um, that's the Jackson one. Do you have the the uh, the office one, Karen? It's there, Stan. It's that the second big paragraph. Yep, it's the long part at the bottom. It's the long. Oh, part okay. At the bottom. All right. Yep. 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 Okay. I just saw. Looked at the heading and saw. Okay. Uh, so there you have it. We um we have an interested party. Um, and we are, are we have had um, an offer of 170,000. We think that we might be able to get a little more than that, but um, we need to um, have permission to uh, proceed with with the negotiation for the sale of the office, and then enter into a rental agreement with First Presbyterian Church at, at Wilmer. 
Uh, I'm not going to read all of that. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you have read it, uh, so you know what it is that we're we're uh, we're looking at. Um, Scott and Leanne have been a part of of our discussion. They have uh, shown us uh, virtually uh, the space that that we are talking about. Uh, we have had uh, extensive congregation or uh, conversations with them. Their their session has had has reviewed this, and uh, this is is the agreement that we we um, arrived at. So uh, I'll, I'll entertain any questions if um, there might be some, there's the, the rate at the, that we would pay at the Wilmer Church. I might just add, uh, I, I looked at our budget, the, the uh, budget for 2021 for the office, not including uh, internet and phone and some of the things that we'll still have expenses for at, at the Wilmer Church. It was uh, $19,250. So uh, you can see that uh, we will save some money um, by going to the, by, by selling our office and, and moving over to the, to the church. So are there any questions, anything that, I, that you have, that you're wondering about that, that I'd be able to help, you, help answer? Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, I have a question. This is Mark Ford. Yes, Mark. Uh, so my question, Stan, is the Presbytery has a policy about where funds for sale of buildings go to, and I'm not sure that it would be a, uh, th that that will match with what we're doing with the Presbytery office. So I was just curious if you guys have looked at that policy, and is it the plan to follow that policy or not? At this uh, time, we've, we, we, go ahead, we've looked at, we've looked at the, oh, go ahead, David, if you, uh, you're, okay, um, we've not looked at that in regards to uh, to the office. Um, what operations is talking about is that we would use the funds from the sale of the office to pay the rent. So that uh, we would not only be saving money as far as, as the expense is concerned for, for the office space, but that money would not be coming out of our budget because we would have have that uh, the funds from the sale of the office that we would use to to pay that uh, the expense for the rent of the office. Yeah, Mark. I guess to add to that, what I was going to say is at this time we are not coming forward with a motion to the presbytery to ask for any change of rules. We, I guess. Um, you know, any suspension of rules rather, we uh, realize that usually when we're dealing with selling property in the Presbytery, we're dealing with churches uh, and the office is a little different situation. If that were to need to be the case, action would be officially brought forward, but that is not something we're doing at this time. Thank you. For anyone who's curious on process, just so that you're aware, um, the office staff, uh, including the GAP, GAP Executive Presbyter, the, the uh, stated clerk, um, Karen as well, uh, as well as myself and rep Stan represented operations. Um, Bonnie Royce came in representing Presbytery Life. We had a pretty thorough process uh, coming up with a, a task force to, to look into this work. So the work was spread throughout the Presbytery. It wasn't, uh, Stan didn't go rogue on you if anyone's wondering. It just fell to his report that this is where it's being presented um, in case anyone is, is curious on those uh, persnickety kind of process questions. Are there any further questions for Stan? Because we'd like to hear them at this time. We don't want anybody going moving forward if they're not ready to hear, uh, if they have questions unanswered. A question, just Stan's bad for going rogue. So I'm glad you clarified that. Go ahead. Anything else? Stan, I do have a question. This is Darren Seaman. Darren, go ahead. Stan, my question is relates to the, at one point, wasn't the Presbyterian office at the Wilmer Church to begin with? It's, yes, it was. Um, and do, are we aware of the reasons that, that they left that church to go to their own quarters? I, 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 I don't remember. I can answer well, that question if you want me to. Go ahead. And the reason so the, for my, go ahead, go ahead. The, re the reason they moved um, a long time ago was that there wasn't enough space then and the Wilmer Church was using more space than they use now. Okay. So as we all know, they had more children, more Christian education and so on and so forth. 
So they moved away from there. Um, but now they have the space, the dedicated space to give us. And then we will also be able to use the shared space um, whenever, you know, we'll, we'll keep a, a I don't know, Scott or Leanne want to speak to this, but this is what we were, what we decided. We'd keep a calendar of the shared space and use, keep, just do it that way. Does that answer your question, Darren? It does. You, you, you made me a, you were pretty vague on when, when you keep a track record of the shared space. Does that mean that you're, the church is going to charge the presbytery for use of that shared space? No, no. Okay. No, no. It, well, we're going to keep a calendar, a shared calendar of the shared oh, space. Oh, I, I, I see what you're saying. Sorry. Sorry. No. Sorry about that. Um, my, my purpose for the question is, are we simply repeating history again, or is there a new venture that the Spirit is leading us? And you're telling me there is a new venture that the Spirit is leading you toward. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very fair question, Darren, and I want to, to go to that point a little bit more on process. I just want people to know that this was a kind of mutual movement of the spirit outreach from, from the Presbytery and from the from First Presbyterian Church of Wilmer. As we all know, um, COVID-19 has caused us all to re-examine our priorities, to re-examine our resources. Uh, Karen, we have not been using our office in a year. I don't know how many people are aware of that, but we really have not been using it at all. It has stood empty. Um, and Karen has been working from home. It has been, continue, the Presbytery has continued to flow and function very well. At least I speak for myself and for those who have worked on this task force, we feel that the quality of work has not suffered at all. We think that it has been a really nice opportunity for us. Um, and First Presbyterian Church Wilmer approached us with some of those same issues. They felt like their space was large and usable and they were not being good stewards of the space they have. We felt like we were not being good stewards of the space we had. And we thought this was a, a, a stewardship opportunity for both of us to mutually benefit one another. So thank you, Darren, for, for continuing to couch that question in theological terms. But I, I really do believe this is something that is more than just practical movement. It is theological movement. And it, it does come from the opportunity presented by COVID-19 to re-examine our priorities and, and how we would like to do things. So um, thank you for that question. Further questions from the body? Yes, I have a question. What about issues of liability? Will the Presbytery need its own? No, Bev, thank you. That that uh, is covered under the liability insurance for the space. So okay. the church is bearing that and that is considered as part of our rent. Okay. Other questions? Um, just to clarify on the insurance, the Presbytery will have to insure the contents of its own space, like a renter's insurance, if you will. Um, and uh, actually, I'm, I think I might need to have questions further about that insurance question with our elders. I'm not sure if that's what we thought we were agreeing to. Like, I think you, you sh still should have your own liability insurance and things as the Presbytery and not surrender that. Yes. If you will. Right. If we're, right. If we, but, would, we would still have our own liability insurance for our officers and like we've always carried. Yes. Right. Um, we have like fire insurance on the building, for instance, you wouldn't right. have to worry about that, but you should yes, have right. insurance That's for your true. own um, people and your own um, contents of your space, I guess. Exactly. Thank you, Scott, for clarifying. Yeah, I guess I was I was approaching the question from, you know, if a if a shingle falls off the roof and smacks somebody in the forehead, is that the Presbytery's liability? And it's not. It's the building's liability, which is not ours. We're renters of the space. But yes, we will still continue to. We're not dropping our insurance completely, but it will change our insurance agreement. Um, in addition, one of the other cost saving issues we've talked about here that was not really brought forward yet uh, that Stan talked about a lot last week in, in our uh, group was, you know, we're not going to be repaving parking lots or reshingling roofs or any of those kinds of things that the Presbytery has to worry about when owning a building. Um, so I want folks to keep that in mind as well, that the, some of those longer term costs uh, are, are things are part of cost savings that we don't see there. It's invisible cost savings, but it is there as well. Other questions from the body? Uh, just one comment. Uh, when looking to the sale of the Presbytery office, the, the um, real estate market in Wilmer is really hot right now when buildings are going for a premium. So I would just encourage you to 
not take the first offer you're given, but make a counter offer. And um, if you haven't done a market study of what commercial real estate values are going for right now, maybe engage in that and make sure that you get a good price for the Presbytery building. To me, it sounds like the price quoted is low. I, I would think 250 would be more reasonable. Which is, which is why you heard Stan say that we're negotiating with the interested okay. parties. Okay. We, I, I will also point out there is a there is an assessment on the building that is less than five years old. I believe it's like two and a half or three years old for 189,000. So I wouldn't necessarily get our, our um, thoughts that it's, you know, a half million dollar building just because we would also like it to be. But we, you know, we're hoping that the, the, the motion is worded such that the Presbytery body will allow the committee to continue um, negotiating a price upward. But we know that we won't be settling for less than that because that was already the first offer on the table. Further questions from the body? Stan, is there anything else you'd like to add from, from budget and finance? Uh, no. Okay, well, hearing nothing further, then let us, uh, let us move on to uh, calling for a vote. This comes from a committee and does not require a second. Um, did we, Pam, did we set up a poll vote for this? Yes, we do. So you might okay. want to explain how a poll vo vote works, or I can, if you want me to. Go ahead. So Karen is going to post a poll and the, the motion is that we sell the building and enter into a rental agreement. Only people who are commissioners can vote. I know that there's at least one place where we have more than one commissioner on a screen. So if there are more than one commissioner on a screen, the other person can vote in the chat. You can either do that to everyone or you can just do that to, my, to me. And, and if you are not a voting commissioner, I don't know, Karen, if you put in there as an option, not a voting commissioner, or do you just have yes and no? I put abstain too. Okay, so if you're not a voting commissioner, if you're a visitor today, then then hit the abstain button, please. So the motion carries uh, by a vote of 76 to two, let's call it. Um, motion carries to sell the Presbytery office and the, the I will just briefly speak on behalf of the task force that went ahead with this. We thank the Presbytery very much for your time, your effort and your thoughtfulness as we move forward with this project. Um, you are of course always welcome to ask questions uh, or continue to pursue this. As for a date of when everything will be done, we are not sure yet. Um, that is an ongoing project. Pam, do you wanna say anything about office contents? Sure, and I also want to make sure that you know that we Commission on Operations will continue to report on the progress of this project. So for office contents, um, we've done, Karen and I have done an office in inventory of the contents. We, when we know better about what we actually need to take with us, like we know we need to take at least five file drawers. That's, <coughs> excuse me. But when we know what's left over, our plan is to um, let churches, we're gonna put a list down and let churches decide if they need that equipment. Um, we've, we figured, the task force talked about it and we decided that since most of the equipment was bought with per capita money, it makes sense that we would offer it first mm -hmm. to our churches to see if there's a need out there on a first come first serve. So be watching the Valley Bridge. Thank you, Pam. Uh, Stan, do you want to continue? Is there anything else? Oh, yes, there is definitely something else. Do you want to continue with your other action item? And that would be what? Uh, uh, Jackson, Galen Jackson. is bringing the Jackson yeah, report. Galen's bringing that. Okay, sorry. Wait, you have ne next on the agenda is the foundation report. Yep, the foundation. Sorry about that. Is there, well, is there anything else from Leroy then? Because we are still in our operations report. Leroy, did you have anything out you wanted to share with us? 
No, I have a written report in there. The only thing I is I want to remind everybody that we're going to be doing annual reviews starting in June or July. So if you get that last year, we had trouble with people laying it aside and not returning it. Make sure if you get a, a request for evaluation that you return it as soon as possible. Thank you, Leroy. Let us then uh, turn things over to uh, Ministry Relations Officer Kyle Nolan of the Foundation. Kyle, you are here, correct? Yes. Thank Excellent. you, Mr. Moderator. Glad to be here. Uh, greetings, friends um, from the Presbyterian Foundation and from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, thanks for allowing me a bit of your time. My name is Kyle Nolan, as David said, and it's my pleasure to work at the Presbyterian Foundation serving as your new Ministry Relations Officer. The foundation, if you're not familiar with us, is one of the six agencies of the PCUSA, and we're also one of the old, we are the oldest, sorry, um, faith-based foundation in the United States, serving Presbyterians just like you since 1799. Our job is to attract, acquire, and manage financial resources to serve Christ's mission. So I'm going to share a screen with you. This will work out okay. Okay. Now, as your ministry relations officer, it's my job to help you and your congregations in the area of stewardship and investments. So I'd like to take just a few moments to share some resources that you may find helpful. Most of the links I'll share with you are also in the flyer on pages 17 and 18 of your packet. The first resource I wanna mention is our online giving service. In the past year, what was once a convenience has proven itself a necessity, as I'm sure many of you recognize. If you aren't yet offering an online giving option and you need help getting started, please let me know. Our platform is simple and it provides the opportunity for church members to give through your church website on their computer, on their smartphone, through a mobile friendly giving page, or through the Give Plus app. We've partnered with Banco, the leading provider of e-giving for churches to offer this service at the lowest cost available. You can visit our website or reach out to me for more information. Next, Stewardship Navigator is a free suite of online tools where you can find best practices and resources for stewardship, including example campaigns, timelines, and brochures. And if you're looking to create a narrative budget for your church and maybe don't know where to start, Stewardship Navigator also offers a narrative budget builder to help you share the story of how God has used your church and resources to change lives. Again, this is a free resource and each member of your stewardship committee can set up their own login credentials. You can check that out at stewardshipnavigator.org. Just last summer, we launched the Church Financial Leadership Academy, another free online resource offering short videos about a variety of topics related to finances. The videos cover everything from what a pastor should know about their church's giving to how and why it is important to say thank you. These videos are short, engaging, and easy to digest, and we're continuing to add new content all the time. Again, the Church Financial Leadership Academy is a free resource. You just need to use the code PCUSA to sign up. Coming this September, the 13th to the 15th in Cincinnati, Ohio, Stewardship Kaleidoscope is an annual stewardship conference presented by the Foundation, the Presbyterian Mission Agency, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and other leading organizations in stewardship. We have a great conference planned for those who will be able to join us in person, as well as those who will be participating virtually. You could register for the attendance option that works best for you. In-person attendees can choose from over 20 workshops in addition to our plenary sessions with Todd Bolsinger, Amy Laramore, and Brandy Casta Waters, and worship led by J. Herbert Nelson, the stated clerk of our denomination, and the Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, who is the presiding bishop of the ELCA. Virtual attendees will join for plenary sessions, four workshops of our four of our workshops, and both of our worship programs. We're offering group person for in per, or group pricing for in-person attendees, and right now you can take advantage of early bird pricing for either option. The foundation is also offering grants to cover up to half the cost of attending for PCUSA pastors, church members, and affiliates. So if you're interested in scholarship, please let me know. Um, contact me by email or call me by phone, and you'll have that information in the packet as well. And finally, we're also here to help you with investments. We're ready to share policies and best practices to support your ministry. And we have several investment vehicles available to fit your church's needs. We've been managing money since 1799 and currently have over $2 billion in assets under management. Our permanent endowment funds pay your church 4.25% annually. 
Many of you are familiar with our forward and covenant mutual funds, which are socially responsible opportunities for investment. And we can also build and manage custom portfolios through a fee-only advisor relationship with our new covenant trust company. We have options and approaches that will fit every church's need. So if you need help with any of the resources I've mentioned or with anything related to stewardship or investments, please call or email me to let me know with the information on your screen or in your packet. The one thing that isn't in your packet, if I recall correctly, is the Stewardship Navigator website, which or the Stewardship Kaleidoscope website, which is just stewardshipkaleidoscope.org. Um, I, I just started in this role in November and I'm looking forward to being able to travel and meet all of you um, at some time in the near future and try to stop sharing the screen now. It changes every time, but I'm looking forward to, to getting to meet all of you and to, to see your churches and learn about your presbyteries in the future. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Kyle. <clears throat> Um, as, as Kyle mentioned, I'm not going to turn things over to questions and answers for him. Uh, you have his contact information in your Presbytery packet if you'd like to get in touch. I'm sure he would, Kyle, I'm not out of turn saying you'd appreciate contacts from anybody who's interested in services, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. So everyone, please feel free to contact Kyle if you have questions about individual stuff, church stuff, uh, whatever it is you need to know. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you. And that moves us... Kathy Terpstra back online. All right. That's good to see. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to interrupt our um, I'm going to interrupt our business of our Presbyterian meeting and hop backward. Guess what, Kathy? I get to uh, I get the the pleasure and honor of uh, installing you now. So we're gonna good. hop back to that good. because you had to duck out there for a minute. So I'm going to start this over again. So sorry, everyone. Well, what, hap what happened was our internet provider decided today was a good day to do some upgrades. Yeah. And cut me right off. <laughs> yeah, they actually check to see if you're busy with something. And that's right when they schedule it. They, they think that that's the most fun time to do it. So, I think so, yes. Let us, uh, let us begin. I'm going to... Um, I'm not going to reread our scripture or uh, rebegin our call, but Kathy, you're going to step forward onto our imaginary dais here for everyone to see. Um, the grace bestowed on you in baptism is sufficient for your calling because it is God's grace. By God's grace, we are saved and enabled to grow in the faith and to commit our lives in ways that serve Christ. God has called you to this particular service as the GAP Exec Executive Presbyter for the Presbytery of Minnesota Valleys. Show your purpose by answering these questions. Who is your Lord and Savior? Please answer Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Please answer, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Do you welcome the responsibility of this service because you are determined to follow the Lord Jesus, to love neighbors, and to work for the reconciling of the world? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Will you serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, relying on God's mercy and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit? If so, please answer, I will, with God's help. I do, and I will, with God's help. And then the question comes to the rest of the Presbytery. Do we, the members of the Presbytery of Minnesota Valleys, confirm the call of God in Kathy Terpstra as GAP Executive Presbyter in the service of Christ Jesus? If so, answer, we do. 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 Then let us pray. Faithful God, in baptism, you have claimed us, and by your Holy Spirit, you are working in our lives, empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading Kathy to this time and place. Establish her in your truth and guide her in your Holy Spirit, that in your service she may grow in faith, hope, and love, and be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now, Kathy, may the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault in, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Amen. And Kathy, you are now commissioned to serve as GAP Executive Presbyter of the Presbytery of Minnesota Valleys. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
guess what, folks? We have more for Kathy because we can do your executive press or your gap executive presbyter report at this time. If there's anything you'd like to add, Kathy, from your written report or anything you'd like to highlight. Yeah, a few things. Um, a lot's been happening in our presbytery. Big, big. The biggest challenge, I think, is the lack of pastoral leadership in many of our churches. Um, but on the upside, I found that we have some fantastic leadership in our presbytery. Um, great pastors and dedicated lay leaders. The committees are all working well. And I know because I've been on Zooms with all of them. Um, plus, I've gotten at least 30 to 50 emails a day. Um, I've been in person at Marshall and Renville and Osakis and Spicer, and I was at the Jackson closing service. Um, and coming up, I'm going to Canby next Sunday, then to Harrison Spicer, Osakis, and Silver Lake to do Sunday services. Um, in the last few weeks, I've done two graveside services, a funeral. I got another funeral coming up uh, on Monday, and um, I've done a wedding. All for, all for folks whose churches are without a pastor right now. Um, it's been a steep learning curve, I know. Um, I was intimidated at the start a little bit, but I, everybody's been really supportive and uh, really working hard. And I have learned a lot. And that I learned that I'm not very good at keeping electronic files. So Karen has been helping me a lot because I call on her to send me stuff sometimes two or three times because I can't find it back. And she's been very patient, so I thank her for that. Um, but I'm excited about all the new stuff coming up, like, um, you know, the talking about the Presbytery office, the talking about grants for student loans, trying to get, attract new pastors. Um, uh, working with um, Dubuque Seminary, and um, we've been meeting with a group called Inventive Ministries that are exploring new ways to think about church. And I know it's really hard for all of you who are trying to do your best at keeping worship and church going without a pastor. Um, and unfortunately, we can't conjure up anybody out of thin air, but we are working. And so I want you to keep the faith, hang in there. And if you need a pep talk, you know, give me a call. I can give you a pep talk. I can pray with you. Uh, I can be available to Zoom with you or your session. Or I, if you think I need to come in person, um, give me a call. I can try and make that happen. So I just want to thank everybody for all the hard work they're doing and the committees and, and the churches that are really working hard um, to keep the ministry going when they're looking for leadership. So that's my report. Thank you so much, Kathy. And uh, as Kathy said, she doesn't get enough emails each day. So if you <laughs> want to send her a few more, she's always happy to receive some contact. Um, I'm going to jump us back ahead, kind of pick up where we were coming from, uh, which is to the Jackson Administrative Commission. And Galen, I believe that's turning over to you. All righty. Um, the report from the Jackson Administrative Commission is found on page eight and nine of packet one. If you want to look at that, just report that uh, we have been meeting. Um, one of our charges was to uh, explore uh, future ministry. And so uh, when Kathy mentioned uh, the University of Dubuque, uh, that was part of the conversation with them was uh, uh, what kind of ministry could go forward with that uh, in that community. So that uh, actually has been passed on to, at this point, after a couple of conversations we've had, it's been passed on to the Congregational Transformation and Development Commission, and they are gonna be following through on that. Uh, the big stuff that we need to report uh, and need your action on, uh, the first is that uh, we recommend, the Administrative Commission recommends that uh, Jackson, uh, First Presbyterian Church of Jackson be uh, closed. Uh, with basically at the end of our meeting today, that uh, effective May 18th. Um, and then uh, we're going to ask for all the financial records and financial accounts to be turned over the property, uh, to be all turned over to the presbytery. Uh, the one thing I would point out is we're going to, we, we specifically point out that all the membership that has not 
uh, been transferred uh, at this point will become members of the presbytery uh, for a period of three years, and then they will be moved to uh, uh, removed from the roles of the presbytery. Uh, and our original request was to have the representatives come and speak at our August, September meeting, whenever that was gonna be, because we were hoping it would be in person and we thought it would be better for them, but they, uh, the, the church opted to, uh, to have it uh, done this morning. So this is the recommendation on behalf of the commission. Um, any questions with that motion and that action? The motion comes from a committee and requires no second. Are there questions for Galen? Please ask at this time. Hearing no questions for the committee, uh, their action comes forward to you to dissolve the congregation at the conclusion of this meeting and move members over to the role of the presbytery. Are there what? any, what was that? Are there any opposed to this motion from this committee? This commission rather. Hearing no opposition by common consent, we will declare this motion carried. Galen, do you have other business for us? We do have, um, I do wanna say, uh, it is with sadness that we had to bring this uh, motion. Um, the First Presbyterian Church of Jackson had a long and very uh, uh, fruitful ministry. Um, a number of uh, uh, teaching elders have come out of that congregation uh, and a couple of them, many of them have served here in our presbytery at one point or another. So we, uh, it is with sadness that we do that. Uh, but as, as was pointed out, you know, the number of people worshiping had dropped and for various reasons, they are just worn out and uh, they're, they're tired of that. The second motion uh, related to that closing is um, they, the, uh, a, a Baptist church is working on a community ministry uh, starting off with youth. And so they have asked if they could purchase the, what is called the Christian Ed building. And so our section action is to actually uh, concur with the request uh, the, of the congregation uh, to sell that property to them. Uh, the rough description is it includes blocks 357 of block 27 of the original plat of Jackson. The plan is to sell it for $1 uh, with a few uh, conditions. Um, the building will actually be named the Sheldon Jackson Ministry Center rather than the Sheldon Jackson Youth Center. Uh, it must exist for five years. Uh, Galen? Um, yes. Okay. It's uh, going to be Sheldon Jackson Outreach Center. Outreach Center. Thank you very much, Mary Jo. Sure. Um, the name has changed a couple of times in, that, in this process. So uh, if that ministry ceases to exist within five years and the building is sold, um, we as the Presbytery would get 50% of the profits and the net proceeds of that sale. Uh, the Baptist Church will be paying all the closing costs and fees associated with the sale and transfer of the property. Uh, including figuring out exactly where the property line is um, and the, the new uh, abstract uh, deed for that property. And that uh, we do ask that the Presbytery be continued use of the building uh, through the end of June as we uh, finish up uh, some of the stuff that we need to do with closing out that building and, and uh, beginning the process of dispersing all of the property. Um, that is the motion. We are working on processes for uh, the sale of the office equipment, um, uh, tables, chairs, uh, figuring all that out. Some of that has already been released according to the, um, to the congregation, uh, through the congregation to those who uh, donated. Some of it's been sold. That money has gone back into the accounts. So that is the plan at this point. And since that is a recommend, that is the motion from the administrative commission. And once again, that is a motion from an, a commission, which means it does not require a second as it already has multiple people signing on to it. Are there any questions for Galen regarding this second motion? Hearing no questions, we will put this motion forward for a vote. Are there any objections from the body? 
Hearing none by common consent, I declare that this motion has carried. Galen, anything else for us? Just be aware, watch the Met Valley Bridge as we uh, uh, figure out what, what's going to be available for people to buy <laughs> from, the, from the congregation. So, Thank you, Galen. Thank you. So Galen will keep us up to date on all of that, everyone. And as you always are every week, dutifully and faithfully reading the Valley Bridge, continue to do so. Um, I will hand things over to Bev Brock and Deb Hess for the COL report. I believe Deb, uh, her apology, she needed, uh, had another meeting she had to get to. Um, we don't have anything as far as in need of a vote, but we continue to work. We are trying to help the churches and filling their pulpits. And uh, uh, we've got the small church residency grants and a task force working on that. Uh, with Winnebago and Silver Lake. Um, so we're working on that. Um, so it's, uh, we mainly, I think a, a big part of the emphasis is to, that hasn't been said by other folks, is to encourage you and encouraging others. If you see the gift of ministry uh, and others in your congregations. Uh, right now we have uh, no one under care as far as in seminary and uh, we are encouraging both seminary and the um, the academy for CREs and uh, we want to be a supportive in people's call to ministry so um, if you thought that thought about someone, let them know. That's part of our call affirming uh, that we not only feel it within ourselves, but others see it in us as well. And uh, speaking on for myself, I never thought I'd be a preacher, but there you go. You never know, but uh, um, I think that's about it from us. Unless Pam knows of something else that, you know. No, as, as Beth points out, we always need people to recognize God's call in us and it helps bring new people under care and new people into ministry. Um, I, I believe there, you know, there's plenty in the written report as well. If anybody has any questions, I'm just going to encourage you at this time to reach out to those on that commission, um, since that is just an oral report and we have no action coming forward. Given that, I think we'll move back to Galen and or to Andy, um, whoever it is that's giving us life's report today. We'll move to the Presbytery life report. Well, we didn't talk ahead of time. So Galen, do you want me to go ahead? Go ahead, Andy. <laughs> Galen got his fame ready. Uh, the P Life Commission has two action items. The first is we move to establish an executive presbyter search committee made up of five individuals. And part of the same motion is that we nominate the following persons to serve on this commission Doug Dent, Leanne Thompson, Leroy Enega, Carrie Coffin, and John Mackay. Having heard the slate of nominees put forward by uh, Presbytery Life, are there nominations from the floor to fill those positions? Hearing no nominations from the floor, we will move forward with a vote at this time. Once again, as I have been doing, I'm just going to ask for objections to that slate. If there are no objections, we will cast a unanimous ballot on behalf of the Presbytery in favor of the slate of names presented by Presbytery Life. Are there any objections to the slate of names presented? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Andy. Second motion. Thank you, David. Our second motion, similarly, is that we nominate Paul Seaton to fill a vacancy for the Committee on Representation. So this P Life makes uh, nominations for the Committee on Representation. We nominate Paul Seaton. Once again, who is already on the commission, I, or on the committee, I believe. Is that correct, Andy? He's on life or no? No, maybe he's not or on, on he's not on representation. Never mind. He goes to the other meetings I go to. Got it. Okay, so Paul Seaton has been nominated for committee on representation. Uh, once again, uh, I will ask for nominations from the floor. 
Hearing none, we will move on to a vote. If I hear no objections, we will cast a unanimous ballot on behalf of the Presbyterian in favor of Paul being nominated to the Committee on Representation. Are there objections from the Presbytery? Hearing none, once again, the motion carries. Thank you, David. Just to uh, encourage you to read a report. We have some things we're working on that are exciting, uh, including uh, we're working on a $10,000 grant for new pastors into our presbytery to serve a mini open pulpit. So that's, we've not finalized the details yet, uh, but when we do, we'll probably make it retroactive to this meeting. So, uh, but we need to work out some, some uh, logistics there. But uh, yeah, we're going to use some of our money, hopefully from the presbytery, uh, with your future permission to encourage people to come and serve our churches. That concludes my report. No, one more thing to ask, oh, sorry, yeah. uh, and, and that is, uh, we are still looking for, uh, I think, two people to fill positions on the Committee on Representation. So uh, just as they asked for names uh, to fill some of the other positions in the Presbytery, uh, we're asking for names to uh, volunteers and individuals' uh, recommendations to uh, serve on the Committee on Representation. You can pass that on to, to me if you want. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gail. Indeed. If you know people who know people in the Presbytery, or if you are one of those people who is good at knowing others and convincing them to do things, please, uh, we can always use the help on representation. Please get or, in touch with Galen. Or if you are a person. Indeed. Yeah, Galen, self, self, uh, self nominations will be accepted for that position, correct, Galen? Yep. There we go. So please feel free to nominate yourself if you have that, that skill set. And as particularly if you know people around, even if you don't, if you're just able to make phone calls, I'm sure your presence would be, uh, would be gleefully accepted by the Committee on Representation. I believe where that does it for the Commission on Presbytery Life, and we shall move forward with our camp presentations. Uh, that I will invite Doug Sanasa to take over first for Clearwater Forest. Hello, good morning. Uh, first, can I ask for permission? Would would y'all like a tour? A quick a quick tour of the renovation of the, of the dining hall? I thought so. So we'll see if this, well, I'll do my spiel first and then I'll do the tour in case the Wi-Fi goes to put. Um, well, first I wanna thank you all for all of your time volunteering and, and all the donations you've made um, to make a lot of these changes possible. Um, there have been a couple groups from Minnesota Valleys up in the past few weeks doing wonderful things. Um, we're going to be posting about it on social media, so see what's happening. Um, for our dining hall stuff, we are our kitchen is just about done. Um, everything's updated. It's enlarged. We have a new food service manager hired, making more stuff from scratch. We have new bathrooms, um, new welcome center offices. It's all looking really, really nice. Please come and visit. It's, it's worth it. We are also putting in um, new miles of mountain biking trails. Um, we have just about two new miles done. We're going for seven, I believe. Um, hoping to partner with Cuyuna Trail System and then also maybe do some state high school meets. We don't know yet. Um, and then summer camp. We are starting summer camp on June 20th. Um, please tell people. We are also in look, still looking for staff, hiring summer staff. So if you know someone in your life that is you know, just out of high school, they don't know what to do. They're kind of thinking I might take a year off or they're thinking, I'm, you know, whatever it is, camp is a great place for them to find themselves and to figure out where they're going. It's a good place to learn leadership, community skills. So we, and I, I think uh, Cassie might be asking for some, some help there as well. Um, I'm looking to find some churches for a confirmation retreat this fall. I'd, li I'd love to do a confirmation retreat um, now that we know that Kids are getting vaccinated and we can do it safely. This is exciting. Um, but yeah, so let me, well, are there any questions before I pick you all up and give you vertigo? Okay, I'm gonna try this. Am I still here? Yep. I think I'm still here. Okay. So we just did the floor in the dining hall. Oh. And where that exit sign is was the door to the store. And then the, all these double doors were the, the double doors was the outside. So everything past these double doors is new. And we have two new bathrooms, 
the offices will be there. And then going up to the the new bathroom back in this hallway. And here's the hallway with the kitchen. This is Fred doing some good work. And so everything in the kitchen is nice and new. So if you are someone that loves cooking, this will be a wonderful place for you to volunteer. I know I'm excited to cook in there. So that's my update. And uh, Thank you guys for listening to me. And now I'll let Cassie, Cassie go. All right, thanks, Doug. I had to pull Harry in really quickly so he could see the tour too. Yeah, it's exciting, it looks great. <laughs> All right, okay, Harry, you can go now. <laughs> yeah, you don't need me now. <laughs> All right, um, things at Lakeshore have been chugging along as we prepare for our first summer camp season since 2019. Um, we are very thankful for the volunteers who've been helping to prepare our spaces, um, which in the past few weeks has included groups and individuals from both Wyndham and Laverne. So thank you to those folks. Um, if you do have a group, uh, or maybe you're just a skilled person who likes working alone, uh, we will definitely take you and find, find different things to, uh, for you to do. Um, we do have a lot of projects. We're redoing most of our canteen slash camp store uh, building. Uh, we're getting a new front sign this summer. Um, and we're in the process of making some plans to reside the chapel, which is, if you've been to our site, is the central building when you first drive in, is at the end of the road. Um, so we're getting new siding on that hopefully soon. Uh, summer camp is full steam ahead. Our first um, day of camp is a week later than Clearwater's. It is uh, June 27th. Um, keep in mind that we have changed our registration software. So if you do have trouble logging in, it's because you need to create a new account. Um, and so if you have anybody from your church who is struggling uh, with getting, getting all of that tech side of things, it is a much easier system now, but they can give us a call and we'll, we'll help walk them through it. Um, but I think I think anybody who's who's tried the new system will be very pleased with how with how um, easy it is. Doug, it did mention we also need uh, some summer staff. Uh, we we did have it have people in a good position to come, but with with COVID and a lots of plans changing, I know both Doug and I have had um, similar problems with with getting the team all together. So any help that you could do with that. Um, we would appreciate. Um, as, as I say every time, there are four really good ways that you can um, continue to support us. Of course, there's financially supporting us, um, but also physically coming out and volunteering, spiritually keeping us in your prayers and um, socially by telling people to come to camp or by um, renting space for your own events. Um, so we would love to talk more about it. Uh, I can't take you on a tour to, to the next building. So you'll just have to imagine that it's getting, it's getting pretty good. So that's all I got. Thank you so much, thank you, Doug. Thank you so very much to all of our camp presenters, our people who send kids to camp, uh, everyone we have, uh, doing all of this important, important work of faith development and faith formation for our kids. Um, and for those who take retreats there and all that stuff as well. Um, anybody who has any further questions can get in touch either with uh, Harry and Cassie down at Okoboji or with Doug up at Clearwater. I'm certain that they would welcome any contacts from our churches. So please go ahead and do that. I'm gonna move us on to our Synod report, um, Mark and Dennis. Uh, yeah, this is Mark. I'm going to uh, try to share a screen and then we're going to play a little uh, game here. So get your fingers ready for the chat room. Uh, can you guys see this, this logo that's on there or is it, did it not show up? Somebody... Okay, 
So anyway, the, the game is if you want to uh, in the chat as quickly as possible, uh, name, this is the new Synod logo. And there, I am not a very artistic, creative person. And so there's lots of imagery in this that I just wanted to share uh, that I thought was kind of neat. Uh, so what, what do you guys all see? And the obvious one is the cross, but uh, what, what else do you see represented in this logo? Either unmute or share it in the chat because I'm not sure if I can see the chat. Oh, there it is, yeah. Okay, we see the water. Yeah, and obviously the water's down at the bottom. We have, within the Synod, there are two, uh, two Great Lakes, uh, many smaller lakes. Uh, the, all of them are great. Uh, most of them are great, I should say. Um, and we see prairie. The interesting thing about the prairie, the two lines represent fields, as Scott noticed. Uh, they represent fields. The, the uh, open green area represents the restoration of some of the native prairie land uh, that's available uh, in the country too as well. Anything else? Uh, so the other thing, the circle, uh, the, the round circle, the sunshine uh, represents growth. Uh, and, and food and uh, the prairies where we send crops all around the world. Uh, it also is to remind us of our history of the Celtic cross. Um, and there's one thing in the cross that they uh, said that was included in this logo. And I was like, what? And uh, so can anybody see anything else in the cross that besides being a cross? A wind turbine, yes, Jim Kraft got it. Yeah, so that uh, the cross actually represents uh, uh, the wind term turbine uh, uh, as well to us. So this is the, um, the new Synod logo. I just thought I would share that with you uh, really quickly too as well. Uh, there's also a new Synod website too as well. Uh, let's see if I can get that pulled up. Uh, is that showing the Synod website? If somebody could give me a nod or a, a yes. Okay, so this is the new Synod website too as well. And it's uh, lakesandprairies.org. Um, so it has a, a lot of new information uh, on the website too as well. And so you can go to the website and check out uh, all the information that's found on there. Uh, the last thing is uh, that I wanted to share about was this restorative actions. Uh, it's a program that's being uh, set up um, uh, as the, the, the church uh, looks at how we are living in land that oftentimes was taken uh, through uh, many different ways. Um, we have wealth that's created by slavery. Uh, and so the part of what the Senate is working is to not do what are called reparations, but to do uh, restoration. And uh, if you go to this website called restorativeactions.org, uh, it has a lot of information about uh, the, the wealth that is found uh, in white households as opposed to uh, native or black indigenous households. Uh, so it's just fascinating information um, because we as Caucasians tend to uh, benefit from uh, the past and, and just by being a Caucasians. Uh, I know that as I was uh, meeting with the Synod and as they were talking about this, uh, I shared that uh, when my family, uh, settled in Arkansas in, in 1812. One of my ancestors fought in the War of 1812 and as payment, he got land in Arkansas. Uh, but there's a, a, a wall down there that's about five miles long that was to keep the cattle from wandering up into the Ozarks. And the family story is, is that, uh, uh, that they hired, they, they paid the slave owner to in the wintertime when the slaves didn't have uh, field work to do, that the slave owner would hire them out to do outside work. And then my family paid, uh, paid the slave owner to have these slaves come up and build this wall 
so, you know, it just, it's surprising the number of connections that we have to uh, the benefit that we see as uh, people uh, who are not native and people who have not been enslaved. So uh, if you go to both, either one of those websites, uh, lakesandprairies.org, uh, it'll take you to the restorative justice, uh, the restorative action website. Great information there. I just encourage everybody to check it out. Uh, Dennis uh, Peterson is the other representative and he was unable to, uh, he was here earlier, but he had to take his mom to an eye appointment. But uh, uh, so thanks everybody. If you have questions about Synod, uh, check out the website, uh, contact me. That concludes my report, Mr. Moderator. Excellent, thank you very much, Mark, for all of your information. Um, as always, I would encourage you all to turn to Mark if you have further questions. I realize we're coming up on noon. We theoretically wanna be done by noon, but you may notice we didn't put an end time on this meeting, so I can now vamp as long as I want to, and you just have to sit there and deal with it. No, we are trying to get you out in a reasonable time, and we just have a couple more reports, so if you can please bear with us a little while longer, uh, we would appreciate, <laughs> thank you, Andy, um, we would really appreciate you sticking, uh, sticking it out with us a little longer. And I'm going to turn things over to Randy Knuth at this time for a Transformation and Development. You have the report for the Commission on Transformation and Development in your packet, pages 14 through 16. Uh, pay a particular attention to the last paragraph. Uh, we are looking into for individuals uh, for task force uh, to serve for uh, developing an online confirmation program, as well as the other part that um, Galen had referred to earlier in regards to working with the University of Dubuque in furthering possible ministry in the Jackson area. Um, so if you would like to be a part of one of those task forces, please let me know. Um, also as a part of our report, uh, and now turn it over to Mark Kesey and Jill Boynick to report on the planet event that's coming up. Good morning, thank you, Randy. Um... I'm assuming that everyone can hear me. I can just unmute myself. Give me a thumbs up, Jill or somebody. We got okay. you. All right. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mark Gies. I serve as Director of Youth and Campus Ministry at First Presbyterian in St. Cloud. And I appreciate your time this morning. Jill and I have been working with Randy and Galen and others to provide an event um, for the Presbytery and beyond um, that is meant to be a one day planning event. If you could plan your whole year in one day, would you try to sign up for something like that? Of course, we all would, right? Um, a little bit, uh, I want to start first by giving you a little background how we got here. Jill's going to speak more directly to the event. Um, Jill and myself, we met um, maybe before this, but because of the 2016 Youth Triennium, Rick Karras had invited both of us to be a part of a committee that was to serve as a leadership group for organizing our delegation to the Triennium event. Through that experience, Jill and I and others um, discovered quickly what a challenge it was then and still really is um, to keep a current um, hold of who it is that we're trying to reach in our congregations in terms of who are the youth workers, who are the CE coordinators, who are the people that we need to communicate to in order to help to resource and connect those people. So the challenge then and now motivates us. Um, we long to, or we hope to develop presbytery connections um, with those who work with children and youth and their families. And that, um, for many of you, that means that's you. Pastors are often those people. We recognize that sometimes you have um, paid or volunteer staff. Sometimes it's the parents who are by default the chair of the youth committee. Um, whoever these people are who help you to plan for ministry for children and youth, um, this is who this event is for. And I realize uh, we realize we're planning this on a weekday when many, um, some of those 
people might already have other day jobs. We recognize that. Still, I think we can connect with some of them. So if you are a pastor and you say, well, I'm really the one that sort of plans the trajectory, this is for you. Um, if you are saying, well, this really belongs to our Sunday school superintendent or our youth committee, please forward this information to them. We'd love to get anybody who um, is interested uh, to be a part of this. So um, we hope maybe one day we'll get to connect youth more in, um, intentionally across pr the presbytery. Um, certainly our camps help us with that. Um, so supporting our camps is awesome. Um, and our triennium event. Um, but um, right now what's before us is let's connect the people who are planning for the year. Let's connect those people and uh, get them together. And the beauty of Zoom is it can do it in their house, at your church, uh, at your lake home or in Salt Lake City, wherever you are, right? Um, so if they're available that day. So Jill and I are today, or we're promoting Plan It planet. Uh, it's an event that a friend and mentor of mine has helped to create, Lyle Greiner, um, and it's meant to connect those who are leading your children's and youth ministry, your confirmation, your Sunday school, um, anything that's assigned to children and youth. Um, and I think, I feel, this will be my fourth planet, um, and I feel it's one of the best if you can give all of your attention in one day to something um, related to children and youth, this is one of the best ways to do that. Um, at the end of the day, if you don't have a finished product, you'll have a great shell of a start to, the, to your program year. And so I really encourage you to look at it. So plan your whole day in a year, connect with other churches or individuals, maybe for networking or resources or just shared interests. Um, and possibly cast a larger vision for what you have in your congregation um, and who you can reach. Um, and believe me, um, or I would like to communicate that um, this will work if you have two youth in your Sunday school or if you have 40. Um, there's reason to be intentional about your planning. And so now, Jill, you take over. <laughs> You did a great job, my friend. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mark. Um, hi, everybody. I am uh, Jill Boink. I am the Christian Education Youth Ministries Director here in Wilmer. And so greetings from Wilmer on this beautiful day. Um, Mark, you really did sum up a lot of it. More of what you might want to know are the specifics about the Plan It uh, event. If you haven't or don't subscribe to the Valley Bridge, we have had kind of a flyer type announcement within the Valley Bridge. So I would encourage you to refer to that. Uh, there's a place where you can register. You click on a line and you can register right there. One of the wonderful things that has come out of this is that uh, the, the Commission on Transformation and Development Committee has so generously offered $25 off of any participant's registration fee for that event. Uh, so $25, that's uh, a discount on the price for the registration. And then also with that, you're gonna get a digital download um, from Lyle and uh, you can print that off and have it with you the day of the Zoom. Um, there's a place to click and uh, put in that um, to, to request that, um, that scholarship. And it's a code, it's Minnesota Valleys. All of that is right in that flyer. Um, just go and look at it, um, find all of the information. As Mark said, you should be able to walk away that day with having 12, hopefully 18 months it's wonderful to think in those long-term um, months that are ahead of us and that we are looking forward to getting back to what the normal is, what we hope it to be. Um, you're going to sharpen your youth ministry, the vision that you have um, going forward, organize your ministries that you have, um, 
And one thing I like that Lyle says is to take better care of yourself. You're going to learn how to do that because it's not always easy to take care of ourselves when we find ourselves frazzled at trying to come up with um, some programming for each of our individual churches. Uh, along with that, develop a strong leadership team and achieve a more effective and efficient youth ministry. This is going to happen on June 9th by Zoom, uh, tentatively 10 to 4. We'll see how the day goes, but starting at 10 o'clock. Again, don't forget to, um, if you register, get that code in there um, to get your discount. A huge thank you to um, the Commission on Transformation and Development. We just appreciate you partnering with us and seeing the value in doing something like Planet. Um, so, and like Mark also mentioned, it might not be you that is in charge of this. So I don't want you to walk away and think, oh, well, that doesn't pertain to me. Just please get this information into the hands of those that it does. And one other thing I want to plug a little bit while I have this platform is Presbyterian Youth Triennium is next summer, uh, July 2022. There are so many changes, really. You're, I, if you haven't heard, it's mind blowing, yes. Um, the venue has changed. Purdue University is no longer where we will be meeting. We are going to be in, uh, I want to just check, the Indiana Event Center, Conference Center in Indianapolis. Uh, the dates are July 25th through the 28th. So that span that we're actually there for Triennium is a little bit shorter. Um, you know, we've talked so many times about when we're on the campus of Purdue University, we always thought if we could get our registrations in, or we were at least told, get all of our registrations in, we had a better uh, chance of getting air conditioned rooms and it never happened. But I'm happy to report that everybody will have air conditioned hotel rooms so we don't have that to worry about. Uh, we meet in the conference center for everything, the worship time, meals, um, small groups, everything that we do during those few days of triennium, we will be in that uh, conference center. So we're really super excited about that. P please be looking for more information in the Valley Bridge. There is in there a, a link and just the theme. And then if you click on that, you can get all of that information. So thank you. Yes. If I may, uh, logistically on June 9th, back to planet, um, it's not one continuous long Zoom. Um, rather, you start out with a gathering Zoom that'll last about an hour, and then we'll invite, we'll be invited at that time to do your own church work, whether that's you by yourself, or if you bring in your Sunday school staff, or whomever, and then work together, and then there's a check-in uh, right after lunch, and then again, group work time or individual work time, and then one more closing Zoom. So it's actually um, three separate different Zoom sessions. Um, and, you know, if, if your day doesn't allow for three, um, maybe you start out with us and then um, you check in later or um, can ask for individual coaching, um, either from Lyle or you can check in with Jill or I later too. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mark and Jill. We really appreciate your time. If you have not been paying attention in the chat, um, they, Mark did post a couple of links there, uh, one for uh, some uh, with a registration link, one with a youth triennium link, and he posted his and, uh, and Jill's email addresses there. If you want to get in touch with them and you have questions or want to get your church involved with triennium or any of those things, please get in touch with them. Uh, we really would look forward to, to hearing what more you all can glean from them and where they can take us next with our faith development for our kids. Uh, we really appreciate all of your hard work. Randy, do you have anything else for us from Transformation and Development? Nope, that concludes our report. Thank you very much. Uh, Karen, is there any new business that was submitted in writing prior to the beginning of the meeting for you that we have to go over at this point? No, there wasn't. Thank you. That brings us to speak out. Um, I'm going to first turn the mic over to Ken Green from the Board of Pensions. I know that that one is coming. 
So I'm going to bring Ken on first and let him have the mic first, and then we'll move on to other speakouts. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> I want to add my welcome to uh, Cal Nolan, my colleague from the foundation, uh, the oldest church foundation in the country, being welcomed by the oldest one of the six agencies. It's not a competition, but you know, 1717 is when the board traces its beginning to. Um, I, I want to be really brief, but I have two kind of questions that I've been getting asked a lot this year. So kind of a couple of reminders of what's going on at the board. Those will be brief. Two quick reminders for some of you personally. Uh, let me begin by sharing a screen and offering um, greetings from the board. Uh, let's see if I can do this right here. Okay. I, uh, I hope that you're seeing my screen and that you are able to, uh, if you need, want to get in touch with me, you're welcome to do a screen grab of this or the last screen I show you. Uh, with a shout out to your synod work that uh, Mark Ford talked about, uh, the board is doing its work uh, internally and externally in terms of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have uh, actually, we have a statement on the board's website. We encourage you to check that out at pensions.org. There's a video from Frank Spencer, as well as uh, several links, including uh, where this statement came from. Um, We've been awarded as a workplace, and so our efforts for uh, diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion are being both internal and external. Uh, the board of directors and our staff uh, working both for our, as an agency and as uh, in our programs. We take that seriously. Okay, here's the two uh, reminders about things that happened this year. 2021 uh, dues for the pastor's package stayed the same. Uh, we did that even though medical prices were going up. We did that by decreasing the cost of the pension. We didn't cut out of the pension to pay medical. We just decreased the cost. And so the question I get asked by some of our members, uh, pastors thinking about retirement, how have you changed my pension? And the answer is, we have not changed your pension. Nothing about the pension changed, only the price we're charging for it. That happened, that change happened the first time in 30 years because after 30 years of good management, uh, the dues are important to the pension, but they don't really make the numbers work. The pension is successful because of 30 years of excellent investing and stewardship. So don't worry if you've got, uh, uh, if you've got a pastor or if you're a pastor, you're a longtime employee with a pension, the pension hasn't changed at all. The pastor's package price stay the same because of that decrease. So that's kind of a reminder of something happened in 2021. Also, we, increase, we increased our offerings by adding a new benefit, a package for ministers that has all of the financial protection in the pastor's package and also includes access to credo, uh, educational debt, assistance grants for just 10% of the effective salary. This is available uh, to non-installed ministers. It is the package without medical. So, for 10% of effective salary, you have this benefit offering package available. If you've got a, um, a minister who is not installed and doesn't need medical, uh, we've packaged this together uh, as an option for churches. All right, so uh, here's the two reminders. If you are uh, in the employment of a church and you're uh, maybe got a raise in January or February, uh, really important for you to update your benefits connect account, uh, check your personal benefits because your pension accrual and your deductibles hinge on that being accurate. So this is just your annual reminder, pastors. This needs to happen uh, within a month of your increase. If you get a pass, if uh, you get a, a, a raise, make sure you report it accurately to the board. It should be being done by your employer representative, but you're the person chiefly affected if you're getting benefits to the board, so it's good to check that. The other good news announcement is a reminder um, that you may not have known there is an experience apportionment coming in July. These happen periodically to the, for those on the pension. They allow your pension to keep pace with the cost of living. They are not a cost of living adjustment, but they, are, they function as such in some ways. Uh, they, off, they happen when the market allows us to do that. That happened this year. So if you're a retiree, your pension check will be bigger in July. If you're in active service in the church and you have a pension, 
that number will, uh, your pension accrual will increase effective July 1st. So we think that's good news. If you didn't grab a, a screen grab and want contact information, I will put mine in the chat as well at the end, but you can do a screen grab of this if you have questions you wanna get in touch with me. All of the stuff I just talked about, I discussed in much more detail with your commission on leadership. They've gotten the details on it, but you're welcome to pursue me if you've got questions. Mr. Moderator, thank you for this time. Thank you so much, Ken. Are there other speak outs that we have from folks here in our presbytery? Things people want to announce, state. Yes, Thank I you. have two. Thank you, Jim, please. Uh, first of all, building off of uh, Bev's message this morning, reminding us our call to be a Matthew 25 church. One of the best ways that we can reach out to our needy neighbors is through our self-development of people uh, grants. So our task force, our, our committee in this presbytery will be working on that. And one of the key things that we wanna add to our efforts this year would be to inform congregations of how you can reach out to uh, organizations in your community that they might apply for a grant so that we can work on self-development of people uh, reaching out in ways that um, maybe to use that imagery of the spring that allows uh, people to fulfill their potential, their self-development. So uh, be alert to that coming along the way. And now I want to uh, change hats. Uh, this is a, a farmer's hat that I purchased in Guatemala as part of our task force outreach in ministry there. Uh, tomorrow night, at 6.30, you can take a virtual journey into Guatemala. Um, that program is uh, described in the Valley Bridge. Um, the unique thing about this is reading the Bible with new eyes, learning and practicing life-giving faith in Guatemala. So would encourage you to check that out again in the Valley Bridge of how to connect with that experience and to be blessed by it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Others out there with speak outs this morning. Mr. Moderator. Yes, please stand. I, um, I, I get an email every day from Christianity Today and the title of it is Today in Christian History. And one of the items that was in the email today stated that on this date in 1834, Sheldon Jackson was born in Minaville, New York. And I thought that uh, somewhat of a providential event. Thank you. Other speak outs? So your last chance folks. If that is all, Nancy, are you still here with us? <laughs> All right, just making sure. Um, Nancy, since you're still here, then I'm going to turn it over to you and you can give us our uh, prayers of the people, if that's all, unless anybody else has anything else to state before we move to our prayers of the people. Okay, take it away, Nancy. Okay, let us pray. God, our Father. We see your children growing up in this uncertain and confusing world. Show them that your way gives more life than the ways of the world and that following you is better than chasing after their selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as an opportunity for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Almighty God, you gave us the breath of life and you alone can keep alive in us the breathing of holy desires. So we ask you for compassion's sake to sanctify all our thoughts and our endeavors that we may neither begin any action without pure intention, nor continue it without your blessing. 
and grant that having the eyes of our understanding open to behold things invisible and unseen, we may in heart be inspired with thy wisdom and in work be upheld with your strength and in the end be accepted by you as faithful servants, having done all things to your glory. So we seek, Lord, as common laborers in this nation, the blessing of you and the hopes in our hearts fashion the deepest prayers of our whole people. May we pursue the right without self-righteousness. May we know unity without conformity. May we grow in strength without pride and self. May we in our dealings with all peoples of the earth speak the truth and serve justice. May the light of freedom coming to all the darkened lands flame brightly until at last there is darkness no more. May the turbulence of our age yield to a true time of peace when men and nations share a life that honors the dignity of each and the brotherhood of all. Eternal God, your hand shaped our lives by grace and your hand rescued us from sin by love. May your hand guide us through this day, shielding us from all evil, strengthening us to do justice and love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, everyone, that brings us to the end of our agenda. <clears throat> so at this time, I will receive a motion to adjourn. I'm not actually going to make you do that unless there are objections to us adjourning. I will close us with a uh, word of benediction and we can head out. Any objections? Didn't think so. All right, beloved, you are cared for and loved by God Almighty who created the heavens and the earth. You are watched over by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and you are moved and lived in and breathed into by the Holy Spirit each and every day to serve Christ, to bring others to him, and to yourself grow in love of neighbor. Now may you go forth from this place and this time we have together, serving God in all that you say and do. In the name of God, our God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, his Son, and the Holy Spirit, I send you forth this day. Amen. Thank you so much for your time today.